Hey there, my friends. What's going on? Vitaly Dubin is here. I'm right now standing next to Adam Rubin, who is Vice President of Sales here in Endotech. How are you doing, Adam? Very good. Nice to be with you. Yes. Yeah, so we've time. been chatting quite some time right now. And I want to share with you really be, uh, the vision behind what uh, we are doing here with Daisy and how Endotech is working behind the scenes, all the kind of different crypto trading strategies, alpha strategies, beta strategies, and really what they have been doing uh, those years. And uh, yeah, it's very exciting. Hopefully what I can do for us today is just give us a nice overview of the complete existing system. And today we're really here to focus on Daisy. So what I'm hoping to do is give you all a really nice overview of what we do classically, what we're known for, and then really introduce the ideology of Daisy and paint the picture for the future that we are racing towards very quickly right now. So absolutely. So um, maybe we'll start with a little background of uh, Endotech sure. and, and how it performs. So I've got a funny uh, backstory. You know, every superhero has got his own uh, backstory, how he got his powers. So um, I was very busy taking on too much risk with crypto. I've got my own small family office that I run with my wife at home. Mm -hmm. And um, in January 2018, I convinced her that investing into crypto was the best thing that I should be doing with our money. So I took 30% of our family funds, which was a considerable chunk, and I bought Bitcoin at the worst time. I didn't just buy Bitcoin at the highest price like an idiot. I also then decided after 30 days of losing a lot of money and US dollar value that what I needed to do was buy alternate coins, altcoins, because of course, if Bitcoin's going down, the rest must be going up. And you bought Ripple. Yes, I did. <laughs> Ripple, EOS, NEO, Stratus. Um, there are plenty that cause me pain. Bottom line was, I've got an issue with trust. So Vitaly, I don't know about you, but for me, everything with regards to crypto is a little bit scary in the beginning. I wasn't really comfortable giving someone else ability to trade for me. It's not like Forex where you're using a broker and this is a different day and age. We should retain control as, as, as people, as clients, as investors. Right. And I had the lucky opportunity to meet with Dmitry Gushin, who's the co-founder uh, and managing director here for the company. Um, great thing about Dmitry is he's a complete and utter machine of a man. I really do mean that. Astrophysicist, chess grandmaster, and he is a machine when it comes to his brain ability. But his career history... He's so similar to me. I just found out he loves to play uh, snooker. He there loves to go. table tennis. And I saw yes, it Everything that I love, he loves to. <laughs> I'm sure we're we'll probably going to end up with, uh, with some, some fun and games. But the, the great thing about Dimitri that I found for me personally as, as a potential investor was that he wasn't trying to convince me of anything. He simply told me two things. Number one, it's client custody. So I got control and I would keep control. That allowed me to relax a little bit. The second thing that he told me is that it's transparent. Whatever I wanted from the company in terms of which type of strategy or is it, you know, an aggressive profile or a lower profile, whatever it was that I took, they would be publishing live. And so because I hold control of my money and they connect using an API to my exchange and they publish live, I don't need to trust him. I just need to see the performance. So that's what he did. That's exactly what I did. I also came in, um, became a 5% shareholder of Endotech. I took it very seriously. And I also wanted to negotiate a good deal for fees. Um, and uh, I brought all of my buddies from Switzerland to South of France, Monaco, back again, Guernsey, Jersey. You know, I'm, I'm fortunate to be connected to some great young innovators and wealthy people. Uh, and we have the most powerful truth, uh, I think, in this market. It is exactly 100% of what it says it is. Where you came to the picture of Endotech a couple of years ago? So yeah, 2018 was my personal nightmare. Um, within within 90 days, I'd lost 70% of my value just before I met Dimitri. It was just the start of this uh, bear market. <laughs> yeah. Um, so I bought at like 19,000. The market dropped down by many thousands. All of my altcoins dropped down by, I don't know, a thousand percent. I thought they were going to go to zero. <laughs> and my wife was going to kick me out. Like, it, I don't know if any of you have had a relationship problem when you've taken too much <laughs> on, but it was there. Oh my um, gosh. <laughs> suffice to say, we did a recovery here. This was the amazing final part of the story. They recovered all losses for me. I finished the year over 200% profitable from my original net entry into crypto, which wow. was unimaginable considering how terribly I had did you know, things for myself. Um, and I told them that I would love very, very much to take that VP uh, title here for the company because when I believe in something, nothing is going to stand in my way from delivering that truth to others. Um, my main focus is a bit of a philanthropist. It's not about the money. It's about what I'm doing with people and who I am while I'm doing it. So 
albeit that comes so obviously from... Obviously, you were quite happy. And they, yeah. they, they, they were happy. And you need some cash to have the luxury. <laughs> you know, I'm going to be a philanthropist. But as a young guy, I, I want to be known as someone who delivers on what he says. Start with that. And this team are the most academic proven team ever. Anna and Dimitri have an amazing history. They're proper academics, PhD level scientists with a real history, pedigree. You know, pedigree, for example, comes from not just that they're successful, but the previous company that they had sold for millions of dollars. And the previous operations that they had are, are still succeeding in the world today. Th those are the factors when we look to know the team. Um, I think if I show you guys some yeah. basics. So yeah, how, yeah. how is it that corporates? I know there is institutional clients, uh, hedge Correct. funds that you are, have been working with and still work with Correct. and still onboard new customers as well. Correct. Right? So as a company, we've got two revenue streams. That's the way that we make money. That's the way that we can stay successful. Yeah. Revenue stream number one would be anything that would be connected to entry. So this would be, for example, uh, a classic institutional client account subscription, which is $125,000 per annual term. They pay once up front and then they connect on that subscription up to 10 million. From that point, the second type of revenue that we have is of course profit share in terms of asking for a small portion of any results that we make for the client. Yeah. Uh, so in the case of institutional, if I just put an abbreviation, we're talking 125K subscription, minimum balance to trade of $1 million, and an average net profit share of 25%, which we imitate on the hedge fund scene. So we take the best part of hedge funds, which is we, we take a profit share with a high watermark, and we take that every 90 days for classic strategies, which gives us a really nice, stable, constant flow. Every 90 days you take your profit off. Yeah, but when I say take, I mean we ask like this. Because we can't take. It's it's client custody. So um, please, will you be willing to take some profit? Yeah, no, this is it. It's you know, you get an email, here you go, Vitaly, you know, we've made for you X, please do send us our share so that we can continue. So at that point you either kill the golden goose and run away, never to be seen again. I don't advise that. Um, or you can pay us quickly because yes, we like money and yes, we've earned it, right? Um, for retail, this was a really interesting thing. We, we, we entered retail by accident. So company was born for institutions. The previous company that we had over had, had over 100,000 institutional clients. So we were carrying over many relationships and wire stuff from there. Um, retail, we had to bump into a few specific people to have a vision there. And the truth is, in retail, you don't normally get good value in the financial online service industry. Normally you pay too many fees. Normally you get substandard results. Normally whatever it is that's being sold is a little bit different from what you get. Um, and no one, even until today, is doing client custody. Only us. Which is shocking to me because it's such an obvious thing to do. Now for those of you listening... What hedge funds are doing or... They don't offer client custody. Let's say that we want to go to um, whatever the hedge fund may be right now. We will need to sign a document to say that we will not touch our funds until at least 18 months or three years time or whatever the lockup period may be. That's, that's how a hedge fund can stay alive because they can project the next two, three years exactly how much capital they're gonna have and therefore they can run these crazy sort of leverage and futures positions. But the problem with that is, why should you have your money locked up today? Why? It's not necessary. To do what? To feed somebody else's commission need? It's, it's ridiculous. So in a market like crypto, the, the secret of success that we've had here really comes down to the fact that we know it's volatile. Anything that can go up and down by the percentage that this market goes, and I'm not even talking about the other coins, the altcoins, just Bitcoin, that is what you would call volatile to the highest degree. And what we're doing is we're taking that guaranteed volatility, it's guaranteed that we have 5, 10, 15 times a year where the prices break. And we during, get, during the last bull cycle, we had 5, 6 times between there you drop go. 30, 35%. And we went all yeah. the way down to 3.5, from 3.5 to 10, to 12, 12, back to 7, to 8. And you have those stages. Volatility is crazy right now. <laughs> and we rely on that. So we are essentially a tactical breakout method. So what this means in the visual, if I can show you just a simple example. And obviously for, for them to pay that 125K, the, the profits definitely worth it. <laughs> well, first of all, whether you're institutional, as I get back to the retail story in a moment, whatever it may be, the entry fee that you pay, the first duty of our systems is to recover this amount before we ask for any profit share. And with the profit share, we use a high watermark. So 
you will only ever have a request to share actual genuine profits. So for example, if you had an account start and you make money and we ask for profit, but the next quarter we've lost some money, we're not asking for profits. If the next quarter we come back to that last watermark, there's still no profits there, even though we've recovered because it's not profitable. And that keeps us really nicely aligned with the client. They really respect us for that attitude. We don't have to do it in that way, but we do it because it's better for them. And a healthier, happier client is a more healthy and happy endotech. It is their success that we must live and share on. Same thing for how we acquire clients. Every client normally recommends another three clients to us. We have pure client referral versus marketing spend. Right. You've noticed that there is no marketing team because we, we are guerrilla warfare agents with a very powerful truth. This will change with Daisy because we're, we're turning ourselves into a billion dollar corporation, which obviously has a lot so of- So we'll talk first about yeah. the, this part and the technical yeah. strategies will then uh, expand on to Daisy, which yeah. is very exciting. So yeah, so, so talk, in, in, talk about this strategy. So in this example, this brings me to finish off this story about how we fell into retail. Let's imagine that this is a Bitcoin price versus US dollar. This is a fictional price, but I'll make it look kind of like the real thing. So we came up and then we came down. And now we're coming up again. I think that's an almost adequate representation. Now, obviously when we were down here at $1,000 or $2,000, this represents a perfect breakout opportunity. This is what we're hunting for, an explosive breakout that will result in at least a 10% movement in Just price. Just make sure that they see it. One sure. Second. Hopefully. Yes. Yeah? So perfect. what I'm saying is at this line point on the chart, this area, the price clearly was breaking higher. Our system is automated. So at this moment, the strategy enters a long position from this point. And no matter whether the price of the market breaks down or whether the price of the market breaks up, our system automatically executes and enters the trend in the beginning of the break, not in the middle. Now, as for what we capture in terms of profit, we will capture anywhere between 50 and 80% total profit using this tactical breakout method. As you can imagine, the machines don't have any emotion. So when they go long and they get into the break, based on the parameters that Dr. Anna Becker and the team code and create with our tech, it will be holding long with Bitcoin. After changing your dollars into Bitcoin here to go long, it will be holding long. Now, obviously, as a human being, you have emotions. It's quite hard to be a psychopath. We spoke about this, Vitaly, today, about having yeah. the ability to be nuts. So the question is, let's say that you're in that move and it's going to be moving thousands of percent as a human being. How do you know that you shouldn't sell here? Right. How would you know that you shouldn't sell here? How could you possibly get out here? But not just that. Anyone can be lucky. Every dog has its day, right? Yes. But could you do that every time it happens? Every time the market moves, could you get out at the top and get in at the bottom as a human, honestly? But not just that, could you also be a good son and a good husband and actually a human being, you know, and eat and go to the bathroom and sleep without 24 hours a day being on the chart? You can't. So that's why people use us. Because transparently, automatically, you connect your account with API keys, which only give us the ability to execute these trades. We cannot withdraw, only you control the money. Our system will hold, 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 and at this point, our system is looking for it to potentially go further up. But obviously, if it starts to come down, bang, we're taking profit. This is the power of a tactical breakout method. This works for rising markets, this works for falling markets, and it can also work for static markets. We have a strategy, for example, which is called Ether, BTC, Beta. And this is a strategy, Vitaly, that we've put to every hedge fund and every family office that uses us. Every balance more than one million connected to our systems, and there's quite a lot of them, use this strategy predominantly with at least 50% of the value because it is the world's only strategy that makes us more BTC without using at all US dollars.